G'day and welcome to the Midweek Wrap, where we stay connected with you at Valley and also just reflect on what's been happening in our world in the last few days. Uh, Richard, you've got a a question that we're going to think about briefly. Yeah, I was uh, chatting with a friend the other day and he said he was asked uh, by, by a friend of his who said to him, why are we stopping running church? Why are we? Um, why is the government shutting us down? And and he had this idea that we're we're being persecuted and the and the government's being hard on us and and we should just carry on regardless and we should say no. The Bible says to meet. We're going to meet. And uh, how do we think about that? How do we reflect on that biblically, theologically? Hmm. What are your thoughts, Ben? But first, Richard, what's happened? I changed my clothes. <laughs> Uh, we just wanted to jump in and talk to you about a couple of things before we hear the answer to that teasing question. Yeah, we want to be thinking about how we uh, engage with our community as a church during this period and uh, thinking about how we can connect. And one of those ways is to, we, we put together a little red card, uh, which you can download. And uh, on that is uh, something you can take, put it in the letterbox of your neighbours and say, hey, I'm willing to... Uh, be in touch, connect, care, serve, whatever it is it might be, uh, and a way of uh, helping serve our community during this during this unexpected hmm. time we're all disconnected and cut off. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, it might be you know everyone on your street and you're talking to them in other ways, but this could be a really great way to kind of initiate that relationship, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, if you have, I reckon, go with what you're comfortable with, but maybe five or ten houses that are near you, that whatever you, you feel, it might be just one or two. Uh, but that yeah, you can go either either knock on the door, um, but maybe safer. Just pop it in the letterbox and um, keep the distance safe. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, look for ways to connect. Yeah, and um, and on that, I guess just to, just to flag as well, we have our new life prayer cards, and uh, you could be praying for your neighbours and other people on that prayer card as well right now. That'd be a really good thing to be doing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. The other thing, Ben, is we just aware that. Family dynamics change. We're all in the house together for extended periods of time, and thinking about well, how do we uh, make sure that we we keep the relationships strong and warm, give each other the space that we need, and that's something we'll we'll talk a bit about next week. Mm. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, great. You can go back to your your other clothes, Ben. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Well, there's a, I think there's a few things in tension, isn't there? Because there's something right about wanting to meet together. Yeah. But um, depending on your, your worldview and how you see the government and how you see your place in society, it kind of, the response to that question kind of reveals something about the story you think you're part of. Um, whereas the, the Bible actually talks positively about government. And, um, and so, for instance, Romans 13, uh, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there's no authority except that which God has established. And obviously there's limits to that. And in 1 Peter, Peter talks about, you know, you have to honour the emperor, but you also have to fear God. Mm. Uh, And so there's times when those things come into conflict. But actually, I don't think we need to be suspicious of our government. Um, They're actually helping us love one another. And it's an extraordinary time, isn't it? You know? Yeah, we have a prime minister who's actually seeking to honour God at this time. We want to uphold him in prayer as he does this. And so we've got we've got a government, um, but we've also had the word of God, which you know Luke ten twenty seven says um, we want to love God, uh, but we also want to love our neighbours. And at a time like this, we've got to think, well, how do we love our neighbours? And one of the ways we love our neighbours is seeking to do all we can to limit the spread of this virus mm. and and the potentially great harm that could could come. Mm. And uh, we especially don't want to hurt the members of our congregation by uh, meeting and potentially spreading the flu to yeah. our, our neighbours and people we care about and love. Um, I think it's understanding as well the extraordinary times we're in, isn't it? Because if we, if we were at war, you wouldn't be saying the, the Bible says meet together, come to church, if you knew there were snipers in the street yeah. and all your people were going to get shot on the way there. No, you'd say stay at home, read your Bible, pray together, keep trusting Jesus. Because um, it is an unusual time. I think you were saying the Spanish flu is the last time that you know these kind of measures Churches happened. Churches shut down. Yeah, it's it really is unusual. This is once in a century scenario. That's yeah. right. And I think yeah, the government's doing um, the right thing, aren't they? But yeah. I, there is that right tension. We want to feel actually we want to meet together. Absolutely. And and that's actually it's right for us to feel that desire because we have you know in the scriptures if we've we've been. Um, We've been given this confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. 
Uh, So therefore, let us draw near to God. This is in Hebrews 10. And he says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Let us consider how we can spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And don't give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So we, we ought to feel that sense of, I want to meet with my brothers and sisters. And actually, on a, on a Sunday, church is the most important thing happening in the world because it's actually God's people gathered around his world to celebrate the love and the, the forgiveness, the freedom that we've received in the gospel. Um, so we're right to miss that, aren't we? Yeah, and, and that's, that's why we've gone to a fair bit of effort to, to put together Valley Live. But as you were reading that, as you spoke, you know, remind us the blood of Jesus. It reminds us that we will sacrifice our public gathering for the sake of our neighbours. And it just reminds me, well, the Lord Jesus sacrificed. He, he sacrificed himself for us that we could ultimately have fellowship with him. He gave his, his life. Out of love for his, his neighbour. Yeah. Out of love for his neighbour, yeah. And that we would be welcomed into his family. Mm. Uh, so if the Lord Jesus is willing to make that sacrifice... Uh, for the ultimate greater good, then that's what we'll do. That's it. That's a wrap for us today. And uh, we'll look forward to um, catching you next time. Thank you. And meeting you at 10 o'clock together for Valley Live on Sunday. My word. See you then.